today I'm going to show you how to create a smart object for the front of this latte mug. This is a file that I'm working on for my creative market shop and um, also going to be putting it into my stock library at some point. Um, and it has glitter on it in a couple different variations. And I'll make a video all about that later. I also want to have the ability on this file to add a smart object where someone can put their design on here and it will just fit the, the shape of the mug perfectly in only a few clicks without having to stretch the design out or do anything strange like that. So I'm gonna show you my process for making that. So first thing I'm gonna do is gonna make a new layer in here and you can do that in the bottom of the layers palette right next to the trash can is a little square with a folded back corner like a dog ear. It says create a new layer. You can also go up into this menu in the upper right of the layers palette that looks like a bunch of horizontal lines. Tech people call that a hamburger menu. <laughs> Click in there, you can also do a new layer there. I have two monitors here, so sorry, some of these windows are gonna pop up on my other screen and I have to drag them over. But here's the dialog for creating a new layer. So I'll hit okay. Now we have a blank layer. Inside that layer, I'm going to draw a rectangle that is just kind of close to the edges of the main part of the latte mug. Okay, now my shape is drawn. I'm gonna go ahead and fill that with white. We'll go up to edit in the top menu, then we'll click on fill, and in the dialog box that pops up, we can click the drop down menu and choose white and hit okay. Now we can deselect, go up to the select menu and down to deselect, that's command D on a Mac and I believe it's control D on a PC. Now you can't see anything. Um, I could turn down the opacity so you can see like that, which is dragging the opacity slider, but we don't wanna do that before we turn this into a smart object. We need to make sure it's 100% opaque and then right click on the layer and choose convert to smart object. And now we're free to turn down the opacity as much as we want. It's not gonna hurt anything, okay? But since I wanna be able to drag the corners into the shape of the mug, I can't do it if it's white because I can't see because it's on a white background. So let's fill it with a color. So we'll just double click on the um, little square for that layer and it'll open up a new tab, which is a .psb tab. And that's just the white rectangle that we made plain by itself. We're gonna fill it with a different color. And I had gone into the foreground color area in the tools palette and picked a light blue shade earlier. So we'll just do that light blue shade. So we'll go up to edit, fill, and then in the contents drop down, we'll choose foreground color because that blue is sitting in my foreground color square in my tools palette and hit okay. Now it's blue. Now, anytime you do anything to your .psb, you have to hit save. And note that the tab where the PSB is has a little asterisk in it before you hit save. Once you hit save, the asterisk disappears. Now you know that you've saved. Okay, so we'll go back to the main file. Now it's a big blue rectangle. Now I'm gonna turn down the opacity so I can see the shape of the mug underneath. We're gonna go to edit, transform, warp. And then the warp box comes up. It looks kind of like a grid. It has some handles in the corners and some dot handles in other spots on the sides. And we're just gonna start dragging our shapes in until we are lining up with the shape of the mug, if that makes sense. So I'll go up to the upper left corner and I'll drag it to the upper left of the mug. Same with the upper right corner and down to the bottom right corner, bottom left corner. And then we'll use our little circle handles on the sides to pull the sides in. Okay, I'm doing the left side of the mug and then we'll drag the circles from the right side of the mug also. So we're really kind of starting to follow the shape here. And we'll go to the top and adjust that to, to some degree. I'm gonna zoom in. Um, if it says place the file, you can go ahead and place it, it's fine. Now I'm gonna zoom in, I'm just gonna hit edit, transform, warp again. And I can use the keyboard and press space to get a hand which allows me to move the screen around as I'm zoomed in. Now we can see that I haven't grabbed the upper corners very perfectly. Um, it's actually not that big of a deal because uh, I don't think anybody's gonna be using this smart object to coat the entire mug with something. So the edges aren't as big a deal as the roundness of the file is. So I'm gonna double click the hand to zoom back out. I guess I wanna clean up the right side a little bit. So we'll go up to edit, transform, 
warp again. So now as we're as we have the warp still on and we're looking at the grid of lines across it, it looks kind of wonky. The the horizontal lines are kind of on the upper left and they're sort of tilting down to the right. Really this mug is very upright. You're looking at it like straight to the middle. The bottom is curving down and the top is curving up. <laughs> so we just want these middle lines to mimic the top and the bottom. So there's two horizontal lines in the middle. The one that's closest to the top, let's try and make that match the curvature of the top. So you can do that by just grabbing the handle or actually grabbing the line itself. <clears throat> and the bottom looks doesn't look too bad, but the horizontal line that's closer to the bottom doesn't look very natural. So I'm just going to play around and drag from the corners and from the middle of the line. You'll, you'll soon get a feel for how this works when you're playing around in here. And this is all adjustable. You can always come back in and fix this if it ends up weird. The true test is to put a few designs on here and see if they look strange. If they look all bizarre, then play with the warp with a design on it until it looks normal, and then that generally will solve the problem. Okay, that looks good. I'm just gonna hit enter or return, and it's done. Okay, so let's bring the opacity back up to 100%. Now it looks blue. Go ahead and hit save. You wanna hit save often. Then we'll go back to that PSB tab, which is still open over here, the two tabs. And I'm gonna change this back to white because we don't need it to have a blue fill. I hit OK, File, Save. Go back to the main layer and there it is. Okay, so let's go back to the PSB again and we'll go ahead and change the foreground to black. Get the text tool, make it center aligned and click in sort of the upper area of the mug because I know I'm gonna have glitter on the bottom. Your design here. Select all font to something fun. How about font Java? And then the type size I'll make bigger. But it's all squeezing together because we need to change the letting, which is the spacing between lines. So I'll go over to the character palette, which I have over here in just nested off to the side. <clears throat> but you could go up to type panels and click on character palette there. And I'll go over to where it has a little A above another A, and this is where you adjust the spacing between lines, which is called letting. And then hit the Move tool to deselect. Looks a little awkward. It's not really that important, but I'm gonna fix it. The, the bottom line looks too far away. I'm gonna adjust that by itself, okay? And we'll center it, upper center, we'll say file save. Go back to the original. And that's what it looks like. That would be where it's placed. Do we want to make it bigger? We could go up to edit, transform, scale, drag out from the corners, hold shift, it drags proportionally, hold shift option, and then it drags from the center. This is on a Mac. Center that again, hit save and see how this looks. That might work if there's just glitter close to the bottom. Okay, so we'll go back to the PSB and we'll turn off the white layer. Hit save, go back to the original. Actually, it's too high and it's too big. I'm gonna <laughs> transform it with Command T and make it a little smaller, holding Shift Option, save, or I hit enter and then save. Here's the main file and then if you turn on glitter, you can see it would look something like this. So now anytime you want to add some new wording or new design in here, it's very easy. You just come into this smart object, you make a change, you hit save, and it is reflected on your file. Good stuff. So go out and start making your own mock-ups. I think you'll have fun, and if you don't like it, you can come by mine. <laughs> don't forget to subscribe and like this video if if you like it, and I love comments too, and I will see you in the next video.